So Bruce, if you're watching, you just left. This is our next example. All right, let's look at this one. We're going to solve this intuitively. Okay. So find the limit as x approaches infinity of 5x plus sine of x over x. So one rule we had was about the properties of limits. And the properties of limits can be added, they can be subtracted, they can be multiplied. Remember we did the one where you found the limit of f of x plus g of x? We found them on the two different graphs and just added them together. Okay. So the same thing here. I can take this which is being added, actually break it back apart. And this is the same thing as 5x over x plus sine of x over x. I mean, that's the same problem, just written, broken apart. Expanded notation, if you will. Okay. So that divides it up into two different problems. And I wrote it way too small on this one, so I'm going to write it over here. The limit as x approaches infinity of 5x over x plus the limit as x approaches infinity of sine of x over x. Because we can add the two limits. Just add one, we'll take one limit, add to the other. So we know this one right here, correct? Yeah, yeah. we just did it. We just did it. We don't have to redo the sandwich there because we know the answer is what? Zero. We know the answer is zero. What is the limit as x goes to infinity of 5 of x over x? What happens to the x's? They cancel. And, they until, and that was no place to put in infinity. It's just a constant 5. And if we think about the function, the constant 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, it's just a flat graph. So no matter how big infinity gets, it's just going to be 5. I mean, if you think about it, as x goes to 1, that's 5 over 1, which is 5. As x goes to 2, that's 10 over 2, which is 5. As x goes to 10, that's 50 over 10, which is 5. It doesn't matter. Whatever we put in for f is going to equal 5. So then my answer here is 5. What's the denominator? Um, well, the, on the box, why is there two boxes? Oh, it's 5 plus 0 is 5. Oh. So once again, just kind of think it through intuitively and how, how it's going to work and what does the exponent or the x going to infinity mean? I think the next slide is going to go back a little bit. Um, we talked about this last year in behavior models. Okay? A right end or a left end behavior model. All it simply does is, don't write this down, but if I give you something like this function, if you were last year, and I said, what's the end behavior model? It's the same as limit to infinity. It's the same as horizontal asymptote, okay? As, as x is getting bigger, is 7 really important? No. Honestly, as x is getting to infinity, is 5x really important? No. no. The only thing that's important is that lead term. Same thing on the top. 1 doesn't matter. Honestly, x squared doesn't matter. x to the fourth doesn't really matter because I'm taking x to the fifth power. So if you remember last year, my behavior model is simply the lead terms. Okay. And if you think about this, if you were to graph this, I'm not going to take the time to, to redo this this year in class, but if I graph this one and I graph this function, as x gets bigger, they're going to behave in exactly the same way. If it goes off to infinity, this one's going off to infinity. Yes? Why do the only like the lead terms matter? Because they're the biggest. The biggest exponent is the only thing that matters. Because think about it, if you take infinity to the fifth power, infinity to the fourth to the second, they're not really going to affect it as much. So you just don't worry about it. Once we're talking, remember, we're talking about infinity, millions and millions of numbers. So, because the bottom one is dominant, because x squared, I'm sorry, because the numerator is dominant, the bottom one is smaller, what's my answer here? What is, where is the horizontal asymptote? Do you remember my three possibilities? One, oh, zero. 
So zero is one of them. Yeah. Not in this case, though. What did I say? Three. three is not one of them. How'd you get three? Uh, okay. No. Okay, so I think the next slide reviews it. Okay, so remember, there's three possibilities. Finding horizontal asymptotes. Limits to infinity. If the numerator is dominant, the answer is infinity. Or you could say it does not exist. I mean, think about it. 2x to the third uh, divided by 3 is going to go up forever. It's going to just keep getting bigger and bigger. There's no limit. Okay. If the denominator is dominant, the answer is your second guess, 0. Okay. If they're both the same, it's just the lead coefficient. Does that come back at all? We did that in, um, we did that like in May, late May. So three possibilities. And what do we what do I mean by the numerator is dominant? Bigger. What's bigger about it? The exponent. It's not worried about the coefficients, we're worried about the exponent, has a bigger exponent. Has a higher degree. Okay. Dominant meaning higher degree. So, and I'll come right back to this one. We get this problem from here. We had a uh, 2x to the fifth over 3x squared. So 2x to the fifth over 3x squared. So the limit as x approaches infinity of that. What's the answer? Which one's dominant? Uh, that's zero. Infinity. The numerator is dominant, right? Because mm -hmm. the numerator has a fifth degree. Denominator has a second degree. So because the numerator is dominant, it does not exist. Or you could say it has a limit of infinity. We're just going on and on forever. The end behavior model is 2x to the third over 3. It's just going to keep climbing and climbing and climbing. So if they were both the same degree, it'd just be 2 over 3? So here, I have x to the 5th minus x to the 4th plus x plus 1. None of this matters, right? Yeah. 2x to the 5th plus x minus 3, none of this matters. So now I have an in behavior model of x to the 5th over 2x to the 5th. So where's the horizontal asymptote? Uh, it's one, one over, over two. It's one half. Yep, because the fifths cancel. X to the fifth, X to the fifth, and it's one half. It's just the coefficient. Yeah, it's the same. Up here, once again, none of this matters. And we have X to the fifth over 2X squared. Where's the limit as X goes to infinity? Say again? Infinity, or it does not exist. Because your numerator is the dominant one. Well, this one here with the denominator, x to the seventh is the dominant. So if you haven't caught it, I've said it several different ways. As x goes to infinity of y, that's going to equal zero. Or I could say the horizontal asymptote equals zero. They're exactly the same thing. You find them exactly the same way. It's just a different way of asking the question. In fact, there's a third way to ask it as well. I can say, what's its in behavior? It's approaching zero. I think the next page gives you all three of those. I could ask the same question. In fact, I thought about doing this on a quiz. Put the exact same function, and I say part A, find the end behavior. Part B, find the horizontal asymptote. And part C, find the limit to infinity. They're identical answers. They're all exactly the same. In this case, what's your answer? Does not exist. Does not exist. Or infinity. It's kind of depending on how it, how it asks the question. Horizontal asymptote doesn't exist. Limit to infinity. Uh, find the behavior, 5x squared over 8x, or 5x squared over 8. Or it approaches infinity. All right. Horizontal asymptotes. This one is vertical. Okay. 
So in this case, we have the answer is going to be infinity. So before we had, as x approaches, way out to the right, way out to the left. Now we're looking at, okay, as x is getting smaller, as x is approaching a value of zero, from the negative side, where is it approaching? Negative. It keeps getting bigger and bigger on the negative side. So is that bigger and bigger or negative or negative? Huh? It's smaller. It's negative or negative? -er? Smaller, smaller. Smaller, smaller? Okay, it's getting smaller and smaller. It's getting, it's getting negative, negative, getting closer to negative infinity. Okay. As I'm approaching x from the positive side, what's happening? It's getting positive and positive. Positive word. <laughs> this one's actually getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. So now we have, since they're going different directions, since from the left hand side it's going to negative, and from the positive side it's going positive, what type of asymptote do I have? Vertical. So what you're looking for then is, if I have an answer of a limit that's infinity or negative infinity, that's going to approach potential for a plasma. Good with that? Yeah. yeah. What about this one? So as we look at the limit as x approaches 0 from the positive side, coming from this direction, right? What is it approaching? Infinity. Infinity. Because x squared is always going to be positive, right? Yeah. No matter what number you put in there, it's always, even if it's coming from the negative side. Okay? Even if it's coming from the negative side. Even if you have 0 from the negative side, you have negative 3 squared. Negative two squared, negative one squared, negative one half squared. It's also approaching a value of an infinity. And what do we know if the left hand limit and the right hand limit are equal? The limit does exist. It just happens to be. So then we could argue: Does the limit actually exist? There's no limit. Does the limit exist at infinity? Would that be a limit? Say again. Would that be a limit? Would there be a limit? It's, 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 it's never ending. And do they ever actually, does it matter that they never actually touch each other? No? So the answer is never ending? No, the answer is never ending. A never ending limit. Alright, I think we've done. Okay, I'll have a paper for you. Uh, I'll grab them here in a second. But just some basic ones and I. I tried to clear it up a little bit, it didn't quite clean up. Um, so I'll have actual copies for you. But some limits um, where you can now assume these, like we have the limit as x approaches uh, zero, the limit as x approaches infinity, we know those answers. So I'll give you those cheat sheets. You also see, if you want to spell L'Hopital, is right there. Uh, I'll give that to you later as well. And then here's some practice. So this half of the room, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, perfect. U5, take six through 10. U5, take 1 through 5, give them a try. Uh, how many do you want? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Oh, no. <laughs> no I got three. I got that. I do one. Uh, what was that? Oh, it was a good one. Make some more copies today and get those students who really don't have them. You can take a picture of that or you can uh, put it in the notebooks. The one you might want to refer to is more like Six through ten on the back board somewhere. 
if you five was you one through five on this board somewhere?
for the second hour. Now you're a president. Now you're a president. I'm sorry? Are you talking? Are you speaking right now? I am teaching in class, yes. I remember. Oh, yeah. I'll talk to you in class. Yeah, I'll see you soon. Okay, so look at the limit as x approaches zero from the positive. And look at the limit as x approaches zero from the positive. Solve both. Solve both. And see, if you're watching from negative, what's this going to be? Well, if this is from the negative side of zero, it's like negative one, negative two, this is going to be positive. But this will be negative. So if I'm approaching the positive side, this will still be positive. So we see what happens in that case. So see if you can solve those two. So if you I got 12 over so zero. Would that be a, a valid answer? Yeah, no. Okay, I saw 12 over zero? So then what about I one over zero? Uh -huh. One over zero? No. Anything over zero is... Man. So this is what it looks like. Zero over one is zero. Here you switch yeah. zero over 25. Yeah. 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 But anything over yeah. zero yeah. doesn't work. Yeah. Mr. Phillip. <laughs> Well, so, so am I supposed to not scratch these? Okay. Yeah, what if I did this? Like, I get zero, zero. Or did you get zero over zero? So that would be negative. So this would be negative two, and this would be zero. Actually, yeah. And remember, if you're stuck, graph is the other Mr. Phillips, yes. would 12 over zero be a valid answer? 12 over zero would be the only test. Which one are you looking at? Wait, so we I'm don't get green. So D and E would be an actual bad answer. Yeah, yes. I don't know. We should try other than then I put in the limit for X. And I got 12 over 0. So that's where the hole was. Massive so because you plugged in the value, you plug it back in and got something, some number over zero. Oh, right. That has to be the hole. Yeah. This one has to be the hole. This one has to be the hole. Yep. Very good. Why not exist? Sorry? Number two. Not exist. Pretty sure number two exists. Yay. I was looking for you to start working on this. Work on six through ten a little bit. Wait a minute. I got a bit one now. Let's see if I can do it with it. I'll take a couple of inches. And let's remove some numbers on this. There's too many. Let's see how we did that. Wait, this isn't your question. No. How do you know this isn't your question?
I was on Marcy for four hundred then. I was always last, but I was the best on the team. I was, but I was always last because we played with the white guys. So, so if, if, if we were playing like all the inner city schools, I would have win, but I would be better. You probably called Comic Con. The cops were show up. I
Yeah. 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 Round or 